Now, most professors and university students know that 250 years ago, in his famous essay on miracles, David Hume said, people don't accept miracles because the preponderance of evidence outweighs such events. That is, we've all had a lot of experience that have led us to the conclusion that people who die don't come back to life again. But what new evidence could make us change our minds? And was this exceptional evidence given to Jesus' disciples? Dr. Gary Habermas says, yes, I want you to listen. A moment ago, I used this Kroger illustration to say, you know, I could be really convinced of something mundane like I saw your Kroger. You know, a friend of mine uses this example, turns it around a little bit, and something like this. What if last week I was at a man's funeral, and this week his son says to me, I saw Dad last night. Here's my first comment. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, now he might convince me, hey, listen, I'm serious. And so now it dawns on me, notice the move here, he really believes this, just like the disciples. He really believes this. And I'm thinking, eh, this could be more complicated. He could have seen an hallucination. But I can tick off reasons why this is an hallucination. And finally, let's say right while we're talking, there's his dad. And let's say there are checks and balances that I can argue too, that something's going on. And here's my point. David Hume argued about 250 years ago that in general, Laws of nature show us that, for example, dead men don't rise. I'm suggesting that in certain circumstances, we might know that miracles have occurred. Or in this case, we might see an argument that this man was raised from the dead. How would I know that? By a preponderance, by a piling of evidence. My friend saw him. Hallucinations don't work. Saw him together. Now what if we tell some of our buddies and 10 of them see him? I'm saying, David Hume's general point, dead men don't rise, is overridden in a particular circumstance. Why? Because we have irrefutable evidence that this man was dead a week ago. And today, I have evidence that I cannot explain away, singly and in groups, that he's alive. Facts add up until sometimes we have to throw out hypotheses that say these things are incredible. And here's what I would say. Well, they generally are, but this time, I think something's going on. I think I saw him, and I think that's what's going on with the disciples and Jesus. Going back to those half dozen facts, what do we have here that indicates that Jesus was raised? He's dead. He's asphyxiated. As Strauss says, coming back wouldn't convince anybody of a resurrection anyway. All right. Secondly, we have people who are saying, I saw the risen Jesus. Third, their life is transformed because, not because of his teachings or some general euphoric whatever, because they believed they saw him. Paul said, if Christ has not been raised, our faith is vain. Fourth, you've got a person named Paul. He's on his way to kill Christians. He's not in the mood to see resurrected Jesuses around. And here, boom, Jesus is in front of him, strikes him down. He's blind, according to the book of Acts. Paul says himself in 1 Corinthians twice, I saw the risen Jesus. What do you do with James? The insider, the family skeptic, and he meets the, meets the risen Jesus. At each of these points, what I'm saying is the probabilities begin to go up. And the general rule, dead men don't rise, is looking less and less likely in this instance only because it's being outweighed by the facts. We live based on probabilities all the time anyway. At this point, you have to make a decision. Is it really true? Is this evidence? Can I conclude? Not just that it probably happened, but can you reach a point where the evidence says, wow, he was raised? I think you can. And what I'm suggesting is that's exactly what happened to the disciples when they had evidence upon evidence, what Luke calls many infallible proofs in Acts 1-3.